Hey, I'm Jay, and I've got something to say about Epic Encounters Local Legends. Hey, this is Epic Encounters Local Legends from Steamforge Games. Um, I haven't opened any of these boxes yet, just to see what's, you know, which boxes are in here. So, we've got a little dice set. They're okay. Um, they have like a honeycomb in the middle, I guess. Or crystals in the middle. Yeah, they're okay. Um, we have a tavern kit, so that's going to come with all the tavern games. Through. So the way this works is there's a story hook at a tavern, and each tavern has some NPCs and a hook for a combat encounter later, and uh, a tavern game that you can play, have your like a mini game that your players can play. So here's all of the like boards, the game boards for the taverns. So here's a little pusher lock track from like 1 to 21. Um, here's a hand, it's probably like the, the knife dagger thing. Um, a tiger face. So look, they're all one-sided. So there's going to be rules for these games. Here's eight Griffin Gates, a Grell with different points. This is probably going to be like a drop it on and see how many points you get. Four mirrors. There's more in here than I thought. Um, here's like a like a darts target. Here's like a roulette table. And you can actually see some characters around this one. Uh, six circles with deer on it, so like probably some kind of hunt game. Some circles and squares. So these are all like magazine paper. They're not real thick. It's not cardstock. Um, here are NPCs. So this is full color magazine stock. These are pretty good. Uh, I can't complain about that. So uh, I assume the color coding is per uh, per tavern. Um, so like here's the Velvet Dream Tavern and all the NPCs in purple for that. And then here's the Mason Flail. So I've seen pre-orders for these online already. Um, and so I think you're going to get this as a pamphlet one chapter of this is a pamphlet. Um, here's the tavern book. So here's the games. Here's the NPCs and the games. So I was right, that's a push your luck for the dragon. Um, so this is probably the quick and dirty if you just want to drop a tavern into your game without the encounters. This is probably the one to do it because it has a little quick rundown of the tavern, some pictures of the NPCs, and then the games that they play at those taverns. Salt and Crack Kraken Specialties, Fancy Salt Blend, Homebrew Dark Rum, um, Story Hook for the Local Legend for the Ghost, Velvet Dream looks like a High Roller, Mason Flail has a Combat Arena, so that's probably the quick and dirty how to get into the tavern setting in the first place, and then here's an Encounters book, so... Uh, this is just, this is not tavern specific. This is how, like, this is like the DMG guide, right? Um, this is like how to set up your tavern encounter, set up some props, description, do some social interaction, set up a mystery, um, have, you know, generic NPC actions that you can drop into any of the taverns. Um, bar brawls. So this is like the, the, like, DMG should read this for ideas. Okay. And then what are these? Are these just big posters for each of the ends? That's pretty cool. I didn't know I was getting these, so here's the interior and the exterior for the nodding dragon. This one looks like that fancy velvet dream. 
Yep, so the Velvet Dream. So th that's pretty cool. This one's kind of more rough and this is like a fort. So I wasn't even expecting those. Those are high quality art. Um, so I'm not sure if you get all that with the reta retail. Um, so here's things you can hand out to your players. Can I open this without making a mess? So there's a lot of empty space in this box, but um, for now I'm okay with that. The box isn't that big. So the first thing you notice about NPCs, so here's all, oh here, so these are NPC cards. Here's NPC pictures, first thing you notice about them. So these are things you can hand out to your players so they can keep track. Um, Here's rules that you can hand out to your players for all the games. So that's cool. So these this these are all the inns. Um, and all the inns have story hooks for the combat encounters. Um, so the retail boxes are going to be one encounter per set. So it's going to be like, uh, if you've ever seen their God tier boxes. Um, so here, I, I opted, the DM screen was extra. I opted for the, not the base pledge, that I opted for the all-in that came with a DM screen. This one seems a little short, um, but it's, it's usable. This is only, I've only started collecting DM screens like the past two years, so I only have like three. Um, and then this thing is humongous. Uh, there's one of these on top and on the bottom, so I don't know what these are. Um, maybe it's to like prevent x-rays or something. This is a hefty box. I mean, there's like 10 encounters in here, but it seems a little excessive. I feel like they could have broken those up, especially because um, they had a base that had like five encounters, and this is like the all-in one, uh, this is the Kickstarter edition. So like this one should have like, what, a dozen? Um, so it's weird that they didn't just make, like, a base and an add-on box. But this should have all the minis and then the rule books for the combat encounters. Okay. So here's all the maps. Um, if you haven't seen the previous epic encounters, they all come with, um, a map, a pamphlet that has, like, guides for how to level your encounter for various, like, party levels, um, a double-sided map, so this one looks like it has, like, clues more than a battle map, um, these are thicker poster than the games, so it's like, it's almost like this is like a, um, uh, like a travel map and a combat map. That one's like a city. So this one's like a summoning circle or a ghost or something. So I have a feeling those little feet are like clues. So interesting. Um, it's interesting that some of these don't really have a grid system. They're kind of like those areas. Like this one has a grid. Some of those are broken down into non-grids, so that's interesting. Um, encounters book. So here's the legend, what they tell you in the pub, the truth, and then uh, tracking how to get to the encounter, and then the combat encounter, uh, where to put stuff, you know, and then stats. Um, so challenge rating three. So the big, the, the, the other, the previous combat encounters, not the local legends, the bigger sets. Um, so these all have like one to three miniatures, like one large. The other sets have like a huge miniature boss monster and um, like 16 
minions for the other set. So those sets are like $40. These are going to retail for about $22, something like that. Um, and they have like a couple of, like just a couple miniatures, like one to five miniatures. Um, but the big sets have like how to scale it. So you could run a level three or a level 13. This one looks like it might be fixed level. Yeah. Um, the combat plan, stats, um, Bard Sung Adventure Book. So all of these miniatures can now be used in Bard Sung. Um, they had a, just a cards, Bard Sung cards set. Oh, so that's what these maps are for. These maps with the feet that I said weren't square, those are for Bard Sung. Okay, so I didn't know that. So there's Bard Sung maps. Cool. All right. So you can run you can run these encounters as D and D encounters or as Bard Sung encounters. So that's pretty cool. I haven't played Bard Sung yet. I did get a copy with the Kickstarter Fables expansion, but I haven't read it yet. So that's interesting. But now the good stuff. So here you get looks like four layers, four layers of minis, two layers of minis. Those are just big ones. So we got five fire elementals, five. Ghost blob, three ghost blobs, three rocks, three will of the wisps, a dead horse, some uh, flying blades, a hag, a druid, four ghosts, three bats, two swamp trees. I'm not sure why I need miniatures for swamp trees, but I always like scatter terrain. Um, and those aren't too spaced out. This isn't too much of a waste of space. I might, after I paint these, I might leave them in here. Um, I think it's already decent storage if that snaps on tight but without breaking and these just set in there so these aren't gonna cause problems taking them in and out I think these boulders are for the hill giant to throw um, let's try one of these these fire elementals are a little cartoony there's not a lot of detail on those to try to figure out um, those bats are pretty good, and I could use bats. I've been eyeing Reaper bats up. These ghosts are they're finely detailed, but there's not like I don't know. There's just not much to them. They're just cloth, so they're okay. Um, this hag has a lot of detail, actually. A little small for some of the features, but um, with the detail on, it's good. That'll paint up well. And same with this druid. He's a little small. Like, the mini's not small, but his body parts, his limbs and his face, he's a little small. He's he's barely 28 millimeters there. So that's maybe a little disappointing for a druid that turns into an owlbear. And here's a big guy. So there's the hill giant. Hill giant, he's got a fun mustache. He's a little cartoony, but ogres and hill giants are kind of cartoony. This griffin's got real nice texture. That'll paint up super easy. That'll be super easy to paint. Um, and Afridi, he's a little small for some of the whiz kids Afridi I have. So, not too exciting. That's fun. That's a ghost, uh, a ghost pirate. And that's fun. That's a little fun. These are a little small compared to like the orcs on the other African counters or the gnolls or I, mean, I don't know about the bandits. Some of these are a little small though. Hopefully they're in line with the bandits, the human bandits. So here's a wraith. Uh, he's got a cool lantern. It's a little bent. Um, I don't know if you can see how it's like a white. The plastic's a little white there because when you bend plastic it deforms. Um, but it's got some flex to it, so it won't break. It's, it's you know, it's it's a stiffer PVC. Um, the owlbear's perfect size. Not a bad sculpt. I, I like that a lot, actually. I like that better than a lot of the other owlbears I've seen. I like that better than maybe the uh, Archon Studios Dungeons and Lasers. Here's an Iron Gladiator for the combat pit. Um, again, he's a little... 
he's weird, right? He's big for a human. He's like orc size. Um, I'll have to go get uh, an orc and a goblin out. Uh, green dragon. It's pretty good for a green dragon. And a giant vampire bat uh, on a slanted rooftop. That one's a good sculpt. I like that a lot. That's my favorite. Alright, I'll pause this video. I'll get some other Steam Forge minis and a WizKids mini and we'll compare some sizes real quick. Okay, so here's a couple orcs and a couple of goblins. And then here's the druid. I guess he's plenty tall against the goblins. Um, yeah, I guess he's kind of in line with the orcs. And then here's the pirate captain. So I guess I guess those are in line. It's better than I thought it was. I don't know why they look. Whoops! I don't know why those look small. And then here's the Wiz Kids Knight. Yeah. So I guess I'm just used to the heroics, the heroic scale where their heads and hands are big. Um, so that's that's actually pretty good. Take it all back. So that's Epic Encounters Local Legends.